Welcome to Family Church Online. I am Pastor Mike. It is great to see you all in our chat rooms today. Take a moment and identify yourself. Let us know where you are watching from today. Today is going to look a little bit different. I am here with my father and my mother, Pastor Joe and Miss Lynn McKelvey. And in our home, we were very formal. So I had to call them mother and father. So... Father, Father, welcome today. Mother, welcome today. Thank you. <laughs> and this happens to be Father's Day. So we are celebrating Father's Day with my dad today, and I hope that you are enjoying this day with your dad as well. So welcome, Mom and Dad. Thank you. Good to be here. All right. So Pastor Joe Miss Lynn, you founded Christian Faith Fellowship Family Church in 1982. Your first public service was Mother's Day of May that 10th. year, May 10th, 1982, and we celebrate 38 years of being a church this year uh, because of that start. So tell us a little bit more about where you moved from and what life was like before ministry. Do you remember? Yeah. Yeah, because it's only been 38 years, just yesterday, uh, when you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, time flies. I can't believe it's come and gone so quickly. But uh, prior to uh, Christian Faith Fellowship Family Church, uh, Lynn and I got married, and uh, I worked secular jobs for many years. I worked with an ice cream company called Richmond's Ice Cream Company as a store manager. And from there, I went to work for uh, Ma Bell or AT&T and was a splicer for several years, enjoyed that. And then we got involved in our local church and uh, it was a word of faith church. They taught that God wanted to heal everybody. They, they taught prosperity, soundness of mind, all of the key words of the word salvation. And we got turned on to the word and uh, we found ourselves with two little babies, you and your sister Kathy, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, where we attended Rhema Bible Training Center. And then after graduation, I went and took a job in Cambridge, Maryland as a youth pastor. But we were only there for about six months. And then the next six months, we just waited on the Lord. And one night we were at a dinner party and a couple said they had some family in Greenville, New York, which is a little town from here. And... Uh, would we drive up and meet with a group of women who were listening to Kenneth Copeland and Kenneth Hagin and so on and so forth. So we didn't have anything else to do. We were between assignments. And so we drove up and we met with the women, had lunch with them, talked about the word and, and so on and so forth. And then as we get ready to leave, I said, where's the mall? And they said, oh, that's over in Middletown. So we drove over to Middletown and Within a day, we booked a room at the Holiday Inn to have a meeting. I decided I'm going to start a road ministry. I, not, no doors were opening. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we came up uh, two weeks later and held a uh, series of meetings on a weekend at the Holiday Inn. And uh, two weeks later, we came up and did it again. And then the next time we came up was May 10th, 1982. We started the church there in the Holiday Inn. And that's where we remain for two and a half years, uh, packing up and tearing down church services. You'll remember because you were one of my sound men just as a little boy. And uh, then we bought 10 East Main Street in Middletown, and we were there I don't 20, remember, years. 20 years. And then this facility that we're now setting in uh, came about. And uh, it, again, like I said at the very beginning, it just seems that time period just went so fast and uh, we watched it grow from the first service we had we had 13 people and uh, in six months we were running close to 200 people and back in that day that was phenomenal growth yeah. and uh, by the time we got to uh, 10 East Main Street the church had grown to about 400 and it has just gone on up to what it is today and so uh the neat thing I want everybody to understand is, is that this has always been a family church, but it's been our family that was the catalyst. Kathy was my first secretary. We have a picture of her just sitting at the desk taking phone calls. 
Uh, Miss Lynn has always run the children's ministry. Mike was our IT sound man, tech man, maintenance man, everything. And, and the four of us really started this church and built it. And uh, people asked me many years ago when I started talking about retirement, well, how do you know who's going to take over? And I said, God told me when I started it, the yeah. pastor would be Pastor Mike. Mm -hmm. And so it's been a God thing for us as a family. Mm -hmm. uh, there were times when you scared the heck out of me. I thought you were going to go a different direction. Uh, but uh, God had everything in control, and it has become what it is today, family church. That's good. Hey, Mom, take, take a minute and tell us how you met Dad. What was the circumstances of that? Um, I met your dad when I went on vacation to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina with a girlfriend of mine. And my uncle was in the military and we were staying at his house. And he said, hey girls, what if I set you up with a couple of guys from work? And we're like, okay. So we got set up on a blind date and I was set up with a guy named Don and my girlfriend Elaine was set up with a guy named Joe. And so kind of halfway through the night, um, Joe decided that he wanted to switch dates, so he pushed Don out of the way and switched, and then I became his date, and um, that's how we met. So it's kind of a crazy And story. how many dates did you guys have before he proposed? Um, maybe we, three. We were <laughs> married in five months. We were married in five months, yeah. Married in five months. Yeah. Still going strong today. Yeah, yeah. So earlier this year, Mom, we sat down, we had a conversation, and you made a decision. Uh, we came to an agreement, and what was that? The agreement was that I was going to retire after 38 years of serving here at the church. Um, I was gonna join my husband, and we were gonna be retirees. And the great thing about it is, Pastor Joe's been retired for three years now, and he's been very, very kind, and very loving and supportive of me still working. Um, He's become Mr. Mom, which I really appreciate. <laughs> does all the dishes and uh, does all the laundry. I mean, really, honestly, I've, I, I have a prize. But after being married for 47 years, he was like, Lynn, I miss you, and I want to hang out with you. Mm. So I said, you know what? I'm lucky. I'm blessed that someone would still want me after all these years. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to retire. And so... Um, the COVID thing kind of right. helped with that because it gave us time to slow down a little bit and think about our future. And um, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what God has. So we had decided a way that we were going to announce that and bring it to the church that uh, Miss Lynn was planning on retiring, uh, lay out our plan about what children's ministry was going to look like, what the leadership team was going to look like, and then COVID-19 happened. And I don't know about your life, what you've done for the last three months, but a lot of things happen in moments of reassessing and reevaluating and, and making day-to-day -day decisions. And just a few weeks ago, both of you made another plan. You, something happened, you decided something, and what happened? What, what, what went down? Well, we went on vacation. We took a week and uh, went down to see our daughter, Kathy, who was the worship leader here for 25 years. Uh, she and Brian had moved to Spring Hill, Tennessee. So we went down and stayed with them. And we were there about a week. And about the next to last day, Miss Lynn said to me, she said, you want to look at houses? And I said, houses? No, I'm not moving. And, uh, but anyway, we started driving around and uh, the, the house bug hit and we saw a house that we really liked uh, and so when we got home I called my niece who lives uh, in the next town up and I said would you check on that house well it was sold it, it sold in one day and she said but there's another one on the other end that's a twin and I said well check into it and within a day they took our bid and uh, in fact uh, Next week, we leave to close on that house down there. So a lot of people said, well, are you going to be snow bunnies, go back and forth? And we thought maybe we would, but uh, we put our house on the market yesterday or the day before. And uh, last night, we got a full offer. Uh, within 24 hours, it was sold. Yeah. 
And uh, so I guess the announcement is we're moving to Spring Hill, Tennessee. Uh, it's neat. We're in a nice uh, townhouse development, and just a half a mile away is where uh, Kathy and Bryant live. There's like a, our townhouse development, then a condo development, and then houses. And Kathy's in the housing development, just three developments. Over. And you're the most excited that you could walk to Waffle House. I can go walk to <laughs> Waffle House every morning and get cheesy eggs. Can you believe it? And then uh, for Miss Lynn, if you could take a right instead of a left, she can have her Dairy Queen every night. Dairy Queen. It's, it's great. It's living. So, it's living. <laughs> as I've always been since the day I became the pastor of Family Church, I'm very open and honest and transparent with who I am, how I feel. I've uh, since mom and dad have told their friends and those things about their decision and about their move, you know, people want to then come back and ask me, well, Mike, what do you feel about this? And I want to be completely honest and open and transparent and let you know exactly how I feel. There was a day that we did a ribbon cut in ceremony at PJ Park. And it was an exciting day. Uh, my dad had talked about owning a softball field and picnic pavilion where families could spread out and play my entire life. I, I, it was something that we heard monthly about one day we're going to have property and we're going to spread out and we're going to have these things. And I remember towards the end of that day, we were over under the picnic pavilion and my dad was sitting at one of the picnic benches that we had had, had built and he was just kind of staring off into the woods, just out into the field. And it was the first time in my life that I had seen the brightness of my dad's eyes dim. He had always had a dream. He had always had the next step planned. He had always had this push for what we were gonna do and how we were gonna grow. And in that moment, it was a dimming of his eyes. And I went over and I said, Dad, like, this is the most exciting day of our lives. What's, what's up? Like, why aren't you here? Why aren't you in this moment? And he looked up at me with those dimmed eyes and he says, this is it. I'm like, what do you mean? He said, this, this is all I have, this is all I have left. This was my last dream that I knew I was going to accomplish as the pastor of the church. And it's been hard for me the last three years to not see the light back in his eye until they came over and told me that they were moving to Tennessee. <clears throat> Memorial Day weekend, my dad was over at our house for a barbecue, and he all but came skipping into my house. Now, my dad's not a skipper, but it was this childlike excitement that I hadn't seen since the softball field. And he skips up to me, and he's like, I got the house. I got the house. Now, mind you, I have no idea what he's talking about. I didn't even know they were really house shopping. He's like, I got the house. I'm like, what are, you, what are you talking about? He's like, they accepted my offer. I bought a house in Tennessee. And I was shocked, like, whoa, that's crazy. But I saw the light again, a new dream, a new vision, a new goal. And it wasn't his own. It was a dream and a vision and a goal married to my mom's dream, vision, and goal. To see again a common unity of a common goal, of a common mission that they were gonna work together and grow and do. How am I doing? What do I feel? I feel elated and excited for the new season and goal and mission and plan. Do I wish my mom and dad would stay here forever and root me on in what I'm doing? Absolutely. But that's why we still do live streaming of our services. 
And that's why we have FaceTime and we have text messages and all those sort of things. Today on Father's Day, I wanted to honor my mother and my father. Um, My mom has been a spiritual influence that could not be matched by any other. Um, My father has been a leader, a provider, a visionary, a person who would always demand the best out of me, even when I wasn't in the mood for that. Um, But we didn't have, we didn't have just, it wasn't in our house, it wasn't just like, well, dad was the head of the house and that was the, and that was it. Um, Mom really spearheaded a lot of the spirituality in our home and prayer and, and taking care of us in those regards and a lot of my style today of how I preach and how I articulate does come from my mom and how she does object lessons and finding the common things and making a spiritual uh, reference to that and demonstration. Uh, we, we want to honor them today for 38 years of service and support to our church family. Uh, it goes without saying we, none of us, would be here today. We wouldn't be doing this online today if it wasn't for the sacrifice that you guys made 38 years ago, leaving your families, leaving your careers, leaving um, a sure thing to venture out and pioneer a work with no guarantee of success, no guarantee week to week, day to day, that finances would be provided in order to support a family of four, yet God has always been faithful to do those things. One of the things that I've tried to live by, and it's not a very deep verse, but there's a verse in the Bible, and those of you that know me know my favorite subject is righteousness, so this verse would be part of that. But the Bible says that the steps of a righteous man or ordered of the Lord. People have often asked, how did you do it? We just put one foot in front of the other and just kept walking. Even this move, we go on vacation, we make a decision. Within a week, we have a home. We put our market house on the market here and in 24 hours it sells. Everything is so happening. I had a pastor friend text me and they go, is it moving faster than you thought? I said, almost too fast don't have enough time to even think about what we're doing. We're just moving. But we've lived our life that way. We did it with the ministry. People would say, did you have to fast and pray? No. The steps of a righteous man are ordered of the Lord. And we've always tried to practice. Just keep moving. Keep following the dream in your heart. If, if this honoring Lynn and I today is, is anything, it's that we learned early that God loves us. God has the best thoughts and intents for us. And if we just keep moving in his direction, under the shelter of the Almighty, he'll guide and direct your steps every day. And for those of you that are watching, maybe you're thinking of a job change, or maybe you're thinking about moving. Follow the leading of the Spirit, because he will always direct your footsteps. I'm done preaching. Well, you want to go ahead and finish preaching? No, I mean, no, no. I, that, that's your job. Let me off today. It'd be nice. All right. So uh, we're going to take a minute. We're going to pray with Pastor Joe and Miss Lynn as a corporate family. Father, we come to the name of Jesus. We thank you so much for the opportunity to hear from a true apostle today, a sent one called out from familiar land sent to a land that he did not know as a couple, both that they did not know, to plant a church with no guarantee of success. But their faith was in you, that whom you called, you would equip. And if the calling was from you, then the provision would be from you as well. So Lord, we thank you for the heritage that we have, that we stand on the shoulders today of these spiritual giants that would uh, come to a city like this and build a mega church 
Lord, I thank you that they are full of joy and full of peace, that what you called them to do, Lord, they ran the race with excellence at a high standard for a high calling. And Lord, we thank you that they are going to be blessed in this next season of, of playtime, uh, that, that your word says that we are to bear our yoke in our youth so that when we are older, we can enjoy those things. So Lord, we thank you that now they can enjoy that rest, that next season of what you have for them. Lord, I praise you and I thank you today that uh, we are behind them, we are with them, we continue to hold their hands up for this next season in Jesus' name, amen.